much. Sincerely, Mr. President, I mentioned to you that the candidate of the APC, Sidney Obola Ametinubu, was meant to be here. But I also show you a program that had been prepared long ago in which he was supposed to be at Ibadan or your state today. And I ask you to please appreciate that he asked me to deliver his message even before all right hello let me assure you I will speak my own. Then I will speak to you as former president of Nigeria Labour Congress. I congratulate all of you because. Like Femi Falana rightly summarized it, although we have transited from military dictatorship to democracy, that does not mean that organized labor is out of danger. In all democracies, including Western democracies, and I'm happy that I had the honor of sitting next to the Deputy General Secretary of the British Trade Union Congress. Labor movements come under attack by governments of the right and sometimes even of the left. So notwithstanding the character of government, labor must be aware that to remain free, independent and functional, it must not take any particular government of any color for granted. You will recall, comrades, that even as a city governor of Edo State, I join you in a protest from Federal Secretariat to the National Assembly to reinforce your argument for improved minimum wage. I have no contradiction whatsoever in my mind. I have no doubt that my first and primary constituency today, yesterday, and forever shall be the labor movement. If you watch the interview I had two days ago with Channel Television, when it introduced me as former governor, former chairman of APC, I told the guy, I said, you omitted the most important one. And he asked me which one. I said, former president of the NLC. And he said, that is long ago. I said, but that is the most important job I have done as a human being. I am proud of it. If I were to be the president again, if you amend your rules, and I'm favored by your vote, I will fight Ibu Hada. Even if APC, Kinubu wins election. It does not mitigate, it does not cancel the fact that there are class issues in Nigeria. And I believe um, nobody spoke to it more eloquently, more forcefully, more ruggedly than um, Femi Falana has just done. And by the way, if I am not a COVID today, it is thanks to the industry, the resourcefulness of um, Femi Falana and uh, our late great friend, Gani Fawehimi, who were always there to speak for us. And I'm happy when he made the point that even when the, when the MBA talks about society, rule of law, we had a judgment that says you cannot, you deny the president the right to, 
to 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 review policies. Anybody can go to court and judges issue black market injunctions day in day out. But what I've come to say to you, and I'm happy that Femi Farhan has said it, and I don't want you to have any illusion as organized labor that whoever become president tomorrow, I repeat, whosoever become president tomorrow, I dare say to you, and you will soon find out. And even now, I ask you to listen attentively to their policy choices so that you don't, you don't, you don't assume that because I wear your uniform, that my heart has changed. I can change my clothes. I can change my khaki. I can put on when it is suit as I do sometimes. But I remain the smaller damn that I am. So I believe when you look at the Nigerian nation, no one can question that the only group that is pan Nigeria that discuss issues, not ethnicity, that discuss issues, no religion, that discuss justice, not for a few, for all. It is the Nigeria Labour Congress and a segment of the Nigeria Civil Society. I emphasize a segment because to be a civil society doesn't necessarily mean you are progressive. There are right-wing civil societies as you have left-wing civil societies as you have civil societies of the centre. I'm sure you know it all. Three days ago, and I'm not saying this because you are here, I said the challenge we face is for anyone to think that by virtue of the fact that he has been elected or he has been appointed and he has the power under the law to take certain decisions, he must worry not only about the legality of a decision, but the legitimacy of that decision. I was trained as a young trade union leader. The huge gap between what is lawful and judgment of the court and what you and I consider to be social justice, which is why you can go to court and get judgment that does not translate to justice. In the eyes of the law, you and I are classified sometimes as servant and your employer as the master. And in the eyes of the law, the servant cannot question the master if the master decides to reject the servant. But the bed of trade unionism, as Alan Flanders wrote, put to an end the misuse, the misconception about what is called management prerogative. Flanders argued, and I believe we have tried to translate it and practicalize it, that the end of managerial prerogative was the beginning of the existence of trade unions. So I ask you to continue to fight for Nigeria. I am the first to admit, I repeat, I am the first to admit that there are battles, contestations, vicious contestations, between and within political parties. Not only because a leisure is approaching, this battle becomes even more intense after election, where you now try to reconcile promises made to what people are doing on ground. Somebody asked me just three days ago on Channel Television, Adams, you were ex, you were elect, you were uh, you are APC man, APC chairman, now APC candidate. I say yes. And he spoke about this for scarcity and the rest of it. And this is where I'm not sure how I interpret um, Femi Falana's uh, statement. There are forces in this environment, including those who have had opportunity to be former president, whether military or civilian, who want to take advantage of situation to reimpose dictatorship by talking or acting in a manner that will make elections impossible. And if elections are impossible, the only alternative 
is ruthless dictatorship. No organization has been a victim of dictatorship like the Nigeria Labour Congress. Every military ruler in Nigeria history interfered with the freedom of the NLC. They took turns to dissolve the NLC and appoint individuals as arbitrators to run the NLC. Therefore, I appeal to you that whereas our choices may differ, when it comes to democracy, there should be no precondition. No one is too good to impose himself as a ruler of Nigeria. We don't want benevolent uh, 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 leaders. We want those we can elect and we can record following the rule of law. Like Father Big Father said, I have also questioned, not today, I'm sure if you be monitoring news, you know I'm not saying it because you are here, that how can we accept that about 7 trillion naira is said to have been appropriated not only this year, over the years to subsidize fuel, petroleum products. But even to use the word fuel now, we have to be careful. Because in truth, they have seen deregulated diesel over the past 10 years. And as we speak, this don't cost about 800 naira a liter, depending on where you are. Probably cost more or probably a little less. And I paid a thousand naira for a liter of PMS only last week. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. I didn't go to a separate market. I stand here to say those are not the policies of APC. I need there are elements in the system that are doing it, we disown them.